Welcome back, Ligari Nation. On today's video, you will watch our process of how we coated this basement floor using our epoxy floor kits. We will show you how we prepped the concrete, mixed and applied the epoxy and the top coat. This gave this basement a huge upgrade. Our epoxy floor kits come with a lifetime warranty. To get yours today, visit www.ligari.com. Now let's get started. All right guys, so shot blasting's done. Now what we're gonna do next is uh, the foundation edge, clean out all the joints, and then open up all the cracks. So I'm gonna go over each one of those. So for the foundation edges, what we're gonna use on that is a concrete uh, cup wheel, diamond cup wheel. You can get these at um, almost any local hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's, stuff like that. And then we have it attached to an angle grinder, a Makita, and then we have a dust shroud on it. So we're gonna run that on this foundation edge. You can kind of see it's a lot higher in some spots in the slab. We wanna feather that out, smooth it out. On the cracks, we're gonna be using a V grinder, a diamond cup wheel V grinder, and we're gonna open these cracks up a little bit, clean them out. That way when we fill them, we can get some sand in there and that'll all make sense when we get to that point. So all the cracks will be chased with this. That's gonna open them up, clean them out. And then for all the saw cuts, we're just gonna use this multi-tool scraper and we're going to go around and just dig anything out that's in it and vacuum it up. You can see all the, all the stuff we're knocking out. So that's kind of the process now. Another thing you guys are gonna to wanna to do is go around the floor, like right here, we can hit this with the, that hand grinder, right? We wanna get that glue up over here in this corner. We have a bunch of sheetrock mud that's just scraping up. So we wanna go around, make sure everything's clean. And again, if it doesn't come up with the scraper, that diamond cup wheel grinder will take all that stuff off. All right guys, so we have all the cracks prepped, the saw cuts prepped, we have the set silica sand in them. Um, and so now we're just kind of finishing up getting ready to install our polyurethane crack repair. And then before you apply these, you wanna make sure you shake these up really well. So we've taken about six of these, we've shook them up really well. 
So we have a few different things. We have cracks, we have saw cuts here, and then we have foundation edges where there's a, a joint. And so a lot of times on your foundation edges, it's not filling up with sand because there's just a pocket, a hole down there. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna be shooting it in and then Tim will just sprinkle some sand in these spots as I'm shooting it in and it should lock it up. For our vapor barrier, we're gonna be mixing 4.5 gallons. So I'll go over some of the tools we're gonna to use. We're gonna be using our Ligari uh, spike shoes. We're gonna be using our Ligari flat squeegee. This is gonna help me spread the, the vapor barrier out a lot faster than trying to dump beads and roll it. We're gonna be using an 18 inch roller after I spread it out with the squeegee. We'll, we'll roll it out with the 18 inch roller. Make sure you guys are de-shedding these. And these are a 3 8 nap. Obviously we need the buckets, you know, mixers, uh, paint sticks, gloves, stuff like that. All right, gonna go over the mixing really quick. Now, as Tyler mentioned, we're gonna do four and a half gallon batches. The vapor barrier is really easy to figure out because it does 100 square feet a gallon. So for every gallon, again, we're doing 100 square feet. So a four and a half gallon batch, we'll do 450 square feet. This basement needs two batches. It's 900 square feet. I'm gonna separate our bees for each batch, that's the hardener. Just set those aside so you don't actually accidentally grab one. And we're gonna dump all of our part A's into the bucket first. We're gonna get those emptied out so that when it comes time to start mixing, it's very fast. And you just want those streams to turn into a little bit of drips. All right, we have our part A's ready to go. Okay, what I have over here is two more secondary buckets. So I'm gonna pour my hardener in. I'm gonna do our famous 3P2, so I'm gonna move the drill up and down three times in this bucket. I'm gonna pour it, that's the P, into a brand new bucket and do that two more times. That'll ensure that the, the resin will be completely hard and we don't have any soft spots on the floor. So here we go, let's start mixing. And now I'm gonna set that drill back in the dirty place on the mixing station. And so now I have a four and a half gallon batch of vapor barrier ready to put down 
Tyler's gonna show you how to apply it. So like I said before, I'm gonna just cross roll wall to wall. You can go cross hatch it, go both directions. Um, if you think you've got it good enough, go in one direction, that's fine. It might be good to have maybe some paint brushes to get in the corners, tight areas. But as long as you, once you get the hang of that squeegee, you can get a lot of stuff done with the squeegee. And again, it just makes it fast. We haven't even been on this floor very long and we're almost done. All right, so we got the first section done. Had a little excess when they finished squeegeeing that out, so Trey's just pulling the product, kind of moving it around a little bit. And then I'll do the same thing on this, roll it out, um, and that's it, guys. That's how you do the vapor barrier. The next step in the process is putting down our decorative epoxy coat. We're gonna be doing silver base, black highlights using our metallics, and we're making four and a half gallon batches. So that's gonna do 200 square feet at 45 square foot a gallon. And so we have our sections marked off. So from that tape to this wall is 200 square feet. And what we're gonna to use to spread it, we used our flat squeegee on the vapor barrier. We're gonna be using our notch squeegee this will spread the material at 45 square foot a gallon. So yeah, these, we got the tape marks everywhere. And I think we're gonna start on that one. Then we're gonna come out two marks, so about right here. We're gonna jump to the other side, right? Come out a couple, and then we're gonna finish out the window. So you always wanna finish, obviously, um, in the spot where you can get out. Now, it's ideal to mix off the, off the floor but obviously new construction. Again, we got dirt outside. It's just a mess everywhere. So we're mixing on the floor. Make sure you got plastic down, a big mixing area. We don't want to get unmixed resin on the floor. So yeah, so what Tim did is he's already pre-made all of our batches. So these are going to be 4.5 gallon batches. So what he did is he has three gallons of part A in these buckets. And then we added one of our three gallon metallic packs, already pre-blended that. And then he has his gallon and a half already measured out. So here's one kit. Three gallons of part A, gallon and a half of B. When we're ready to go, he's gonna mix that, dump that, mix that in there. And then he's already pre-separated out all of our highlights as well. So this makes it just super simple and fast. He can just constantly mix. He doesn't have to measure, stop, mix in metallics. Everything is pre-mixed, pre-measured for every single batch that we're gonna make. Um, and so once we start, it's just a non-stop process. So biggest thing is once you get done mixing that batch, you wanna dump that out on the floor. That's gonna give you the maximum working time. And I like to spread out the perimeter and then I'll show you how I just, I do all the edges first and then I just work into the middle. Makes it really simple and fast.
All right, so like I said, guys, that squeegee, not squeegee, is made for 45 square foot a gallon. We perfectly uh, spread that product out. We're right at our mark. Everything's covered. We want to roll it though because the not squeegee will create a little bit of air because you know you're running lines through it, then it's flowing back together. It's, it's trapping some air in the resin. So after we roll it, we shouldn't have any bubbles, and then we can add our highlights. So we're just going to roll it really quick. So once we roll, you can see it just eliminated all those bubbles. So now we're ready for the highlights. So I already have my highlights mixed up. I'm gonna be dumping them out um, in, in kind of medium veins all over the floor. And then I'm gonna take the, our flat squeegee and I'm gonna blend it with the flat squeegee. Once that's done, I'm gonna spritz it with isopropyl alcohol, 91% or higher. And then after we get done with the next section, I'll jump back and miss the whole floor with denatured alcohol. That's gonna eliminate any, any air that might be left in the resin. And you'll notice I just go random directions. So we're looking for small to medium drips, and I'm just gonna barely pull the trigger. It's good to test it, make sure you got it spraying good. So guys, all we got to do now is just repeat that process. And again, we're going to be jumping back and forth um, from that side to here. So we end out that slider. And I always want to blend that first and then work my way back. Because the longer this sits, this is setting up, this is fresh, right? And since we're jumping back and forth, I always want to blend that line in first with the highlights and then finish out the floor. Notice too guys, I'm kind of not doing a perfectly straight line. I'll kind of go out into that floor a little bit more here and there.
Okay, so just like that first section, I'm gonna spritz it with the isopropyl, and then once I'm done with this section, I'm gonna hop back and miss that first section with denatured alcohol, and we kinda just repeat that step. Do a section, get it done, and then jump back to the previous, missed it with denatured alcohol. All right, so now I'll grab the denatured alcohol, miss that first section. Okay, so we're gonna be spraying the urethane out of a Chapman um, concrete sealer sprayer. Um, we have a, a circle tip on it, and we thin the, the, the urethane out 20%. Typically, you do 10% when you're rolling. We thin it out 20% when we're spraying. Um, we're gonna be using 18 inch roller, nine inch roller. Both of them are three-eighths naps. Tim's gonna spray it. We're gonna keep it away from the walls just so we don't get overspray on the walls and then I'm gonna work the product up to the wall. Obviously, the guys on the nine inch will get um, right to the wall edge. So since our roller pads are dry, we'll spray a little bit out in like a puddle. I'll kind of saturate that roller and then we'll start the process. <laughs> 